Hello, good evening, and welcome to another first for Off Track. Two drivers making a return to the sport in 2021 in a joint interview. So, Chris Lloyd, Ed Nietzsche, welcome, good evening, and thank you very much for doing this. Hiya. Hello, hi, Jonathan. How are we doing? So, it'd be okay, Chris, because people won't know who you are, so we'll have like a name tag below you, so it'd be fine. People know, people will know, because it's obviously such a long time since you've raced, but we'll, we'll come to that in a minute, don't worry. Right, so my first question is, you guys are kind of sat, sat together, so what, what's going on? Is it the most obvious friendship in the world? Well, you know, it's really strange because all through this lockdown, obviously I've been bored, we've all been bored. I've been thinking for five or six years that, you know what, I've got to have another go, I think. I've got to have another go. So I've been on an hour in for ages and I just, I was going to have a go in a heritage car, which I did actually at Coventry in 2015 2016 in jane bean's car absolutely loved it and i'm like you know what i could have a go at this so i've been umming and ahhing for the last few years and i'm like i've gone to the time of, you know my life where if i don't do it now i'm going to kick myself in three or four years i've got to do it so i just looked through my phone and i'm like who's got a car who's got a car who would i think got a car and ed's number was there so i rung it okay. i rang him he's like all right lloyd I'm like, yeah, not bad, Eddie. How are you? And he's like, yeah, fine. I said, uh, random question. Would you have any cars for sale? And he's like, actually, I have. And I'm like, bro. He said, come over, have a look, see what you think. Here we are today. And you're literally 20 minutes, aren't you? Literally 20 yeah. minutes away from, from, from each other. So you weren't you you weren't friends then necessarily before that phone call. You kind of knew each other, but yeah, we've we've always done stuff on and off over the years. But obviously, you know, when you leave stock cars, you sort of lose yeah. a big family. Yeah. So you sort of go away, work commitments. You, you just knuckle down. You have children, you know. And then I don't know if it's a bit of a midlife crisis sort of thing I'm going through or what. But I just think to myself, now's the time. If I'm going to do it, I've got to do it now. And that's Brilliant. what I'm doing. I'm ready. Good. So that's your reason for coming back into into Formula One after after a big gap. Ed, can I say what about you then? Why why sort of the comeback? Similar, really. Um, I parked parked my cars up. Really, I'd kind of had enough of it, and um, got the phone call off Lloyd, and he came to see us, and he was really up for it. And what he said made sense. Like, just do a few meetings and have the car, and and just enjoy it more. You don't take it as serious, and. Um, I had my car still sat there. I uh, just wanted a few bits doing to it. So I said, yeah, I just thought to myself, yeah, I'll um, I'll get mine ready and kind of built them up together, really. Yeah. And, and, and got them both ready together. Brilliant. So I guess if 2021 for the pair of you is, is to come back into Formula One and just for enjoyment, you know, it's kind of, if we don't do it now, then we may never do it again. I suppose, yeah. I think you just want to do a bit of shale, don't you? I, I, I want to do... I want to do shale because, like, like what you said, mine was really tarmac. That was me. I, I, I had a choice. I bought a shale car, which we're going to get to that in a bit anyway. But bought a shale car, and the people I had to help me with, I didn't have enough people. So a big Ronnie, who used to be with me all the time, he said, you've got to do either one or the other. So I found that we had more success on tarmac, and that was it. We just basically sold me shale car. To James, his Ed's brother. Ah, okay. and I was totally contracted then. This on, was back in back in two thousand and two or something. Was it? Yeah, two thousand and two, something like that. And okay. and I just carried on with tarmac. Yes. And then now, since having a go in that heritage car, I actually had a car that handled on shale. At that's kind of what got us into it, isn't yeah. it? Back then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if we go back to the very beginning then, um, if I may, so your dad's both raced uh, Formula One, is that the reason why you came into the sport, or did you kind of think, oh, I, I might do something else, or was it always going to be, I want to be a Formula One stock car driver? Kind of, really. Um, it started off um, like with Rebels, really. Uh, we yeah. lived right near where the Rebels were made, and my dad was friends with with Hans, the guy in the Rebels, kind of got him yeah, yeah. that way, and then you kind of want the next thing and you can do the next thing and uh we was talking to a guy that knew about lloyd selling that car and james and my dad went to have a look at it and had a deal on it came away and um and then kind of got into 
stock cars that way. Yeah. Um, James obviously went straight to Formula One, and that's where I um, say I'm a little bit younger than James. So I thought perhaps I should do the V8s. Yeah. Um, for a couple of years as a, as a stepping stone, really, to to finish up yeah. with the in the F1s eventually. Yeah. And what are you, Chris? <laughs> The, my dad used to do it years ago, obviously, as you know. And I was always out razzing around, nightclubbing, this, that, do as you do when you're young. And I was always getting in a bit of a trouble. And I did actually have a go in a, in a hot stock of Keith Chambers's in, I don't know when that would be, uh, 1994 or something like that, or whenever Keith was in it. And I, I'd never raced anything in my life. And I got second in an eat. And I think second in the final at Ennisford. Since then, yeah. I looked at, at Formula Ones and I thought, you know what, I could do this. And uh, my dad says, look, we've got to find you something to do to keep you out of trouble, basically. And, uh, and I had to go in a Wally Pittam car. Can you remember Wally Pittam? I, I do you remember Wally Pittam, yeah. 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 And I had to go at uh, Northampton in it. Um, I, I don't think I won anything, but I, I really enjoyed it. And we ended up buying that car which was actually, unbeknownst to us, wasn't the best car in the world, to be quite truthful. Yeah. Uh, and then it just went from there, Jonathan, really. It just, just yeah. kicked off. Uh, and then next thing you know, you, you're deep in. You know, you yeah, absolutely. Stuff. You don't okay, so let's, let's talk about your, your career then. So, if you don't mind, Chris, but, so you debuted in 1995 at Northampton and you, and you raced for a 10-year period. And you've alluded to um, the, the tarmac piece. Um, was it something you really enjoyed race, racing on tarmac at, at the time? Because that's where your focus was, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I love tarmac. Tarmac was more like, to me, was like road racing. Shale was a bit of an art. Yeah. You know? Well, tarmac is, you know, to a certain extent. But tarmac, I had, I had two cars, but we couldn't, I couldn't, we couldn't do it all. So it yeah. gave me the choice of doing one or the other. So the most success I had was on tarmac. So that was it. We just focused straight on the tarmac and just just kept going and going and going basically yeah you you bought um the very lovely john lund's tarmac special which is a pretty iconic car at the time how, how did that come about that came through clive linton um okay. with having the wally pitton car uh obviously we didn't we weren't going anywhere to have just a straight uh, old-fashioned 454 with cast iron heads on which we, we, we never knew anything about all the stuff that, that, that's come forward through the years. And we said to Clive, we could do one another car. And he said, oh, I think, because I think Clive was quite well in with John at yeah. the time. And um, he said, oh, I think John's selling his tarmac car. So John brought that car down to Clive's, which is only up the road from here, weren't it? Yeah, totally. Um, we went down and had a look and basically said, we'll have it. Yeah. And then, you know, it went from there. The car actually wasn't the best handling car in the world, to be truthful. Right, okay. But as we go along with the story, I can tell you more and more of how it got to be as good as it did, um, with obviously certain engines that we had. Uh, yeah. You know, and, you know, practice makes perfect with anything. And we just kept going at it and going at it, which become pretty good, really, I think. You know, and yeah. Then, and then basically, Jonathan, after that, it, I got with that, I got started getting dizzy heads, which was the illness that you were, you're going to ask me about, which was yeah. carbon monoxide poisoning in my house, which I never knew, you see. Um, yeah, well, come up, I'll ask you about that in a second. So just yeah, going back sorry. to the, no, so going back to, actually, got a John Lund car, uh, which is pretty iconic. And then um, we, we talk about cars a lot in stock cars and these great cars but there's also an engine that people talk about and it's one that you had it's this huge big block was it 580 cubic inch massive engine that i think is still around in the sport at the, even now so what were we we like one day going right i want an engine and they're going what about this one like no i'm bigger i want bigger do you know how, how did it happen <laughs> now that come about was the engine that we had in john's car we, we bought the block off uh ron big ron atkinson who still builds engines to this day. Um, and basically, we had a pair of Brodex heads that we imported from America through Clive. Clive put that engine together, put it in that John Lund's tarmac car, and off we went. Got to Red, 
but then we kept dropping red blue couldn't no. couldn't really stabilize at red needed more power gareth bott lived up the road from us still does retired he said chris he says I've got an engine for you and it was a 510 which was done by pete and i um mm. he said this engine will put you on the map because gaz on tarmac his second time when he come back was absolutely yeah, yeah. Red, and he was red hot and uh, we put this engine in and actually when we bought this engine off gaz he actually came on board with us and he okay. started changing stuff on the car you know as well as the engine changing panards angles this that and the other which i knew nothing about which i still don't know to be quite honest um and then we started winning races winning races winning races and i was unstoppable at, at some point but then we had 12 months of that then we sent the engine down to peter knights said to peter oh, i want some more power so then he bought it to 532 cubic inch we then had a titanium crank uh had all the heads flowed again uh, you know and all gas works done and in the end it turned out to be 720 horsepower with 1175 pound foot of torque and that engine was if you fell out with it it would hurt you so you, yeah. had to, you had to be a team honestly you had to be so much if you got angry and just hit the throttle mate you'd just destroy yourself you know but yeah. what an engine that was and, and everybody the sound of that engine it, it used to, when it was ticking over it used to play a tune and yeah. you'd have such lights as Stuart Smith come to me and go Lloydy, he'd had a few jars, bless him. Lloydy, I was like, what's the matter, Stuart? He's like, your engine's better than sex, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it is. And I'm like, do you like it? And he says, I've never, ever heard an engine on, on song going yeah. down the straight at Northampton like that. Yeah. It's very famous. It's a very famous engine. Is it? I think it is still about in the sport. I'm not sure who has it. It's gone to a myriad of people, but I'm, I'm sure it's still about. I think between them all i think mick harris had it i think um but ben erdman ben erdman martin okay. Virginia, they yeah. had it. i think tony smith had it and between them i think they wrecked it and now i okay. think somebody caught i think kenny coleman's got it in a minute okay so i think he's trying to put it back together but you know in einstein it's a wonderful thing i wish i'd kept the engine yeah yeah, because I've come back now, and if you could have dropped that in somewhere, it'd still be competitive now. Yeah, you know, absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks for that. The one I've got, we're going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> it's a great story. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned about shale, and you mentioned Clive Linton. Did you have his last ever built Linton shale car? Yeah, it was built for Robert, which was Clive's son. Yeah. And um, for some unknown reason, Robert Robert didn't didn't have a go. Um, we bought it. And then we put the old engine out of the tarmac car, the first one that you know I mentioned to you about about Ron. We put yeah. that engine in that Linton car. Raced, I think I did a season with it. I think it, but it, you know, I never had much success with it. Yeah. And with Shale alone, I never had much success. So I sort of we kept smashing it up. Ron kept fixing it, and this is when we got to the point where I said you've either got to do one or the yeah. other. Uh, yeah. And that's when we did, when we just split it. In fact, my shale car, that Linton shale car, Wayne Andley's got. Oh, okay. And, and he still never paid me for it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's still around, it's still there, but I don't know if that's going to go anywhere, but it is still okay. there. So, you know, that's, that's where we're at. And then the next car I had was a Ray Witts car he built for me. Yeah. Um, and I never raced it. Okay. Brand fire new, and that was when James and and Mal, Ed's dad came over and bought the car there and then. Yeah, was going. Right. And okay. that got them going to where yeah. you know, today. Yeah, it's it's very you you are very linked, aren't you? It seems throughout you know up yeah, to now. Like I say it's, it's very very linked together. Um, I wonder, really, because it sort of brought us. He sat in my lounge. He sat in his lounge, and I just had <laughs> roast beef cobs, you know, and all that. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've kind of gone through your career a little bit and um you registered in 2006 we didn't race and you've already alluded to the fact that you were taken quite ill is you know would you mind i guess sharing what happened and is that the reason why you stopped formula one yeah i've got this funny thing going on um 
just just having dizzy spells uh, all you know more often more often more often through the days and i'm like there's something not right but i can never put my finger on it and, yeah. and my missus as well she was getting headaches all the time I even had a dog even had a, a dog but he never bothered him um but i carried on racing and i, and I was getting to the point where I, I weren't focusing on what i was doing yeah you know and and when i was at northampton one day and i'll never forget it and uh, i'm going down the straight with that big engine in near enough flat out and i'm looking at the crowd and i'm like mm -hmm. without swearing what are you doing yeah and I literally pulled off went to the middle and i'll be truthful i cried my eyes out in my helmet okay you know, which weren't nice because when somebody something stops you from doing something that you really mm -hmm. like it's not like somebody chopping your legs off you know and and yeah and but nobody could see that when you look at me i look perfectly normal yeah you know but i had all this permanent dizzy head and in the end i kept going to the doctors beyond doctors beyond doctors to the point where i said i'm not leaving till you sort me out and uh he sort of just turned around to me and said um what central eating have you got in your house and i'm like what the you know has that got to do with this and he yeah. said tell me what central eating? and i told him and he said, look, do me a favour, when you leave here, get the gas board out. So yeah. I got the gas board out, guy walks in the house the next day and he goes, Poof, Jesus Christ, mate, I'm like, what's the matter? He's like, yeah. are you all right? And I'm like, well, no, not really. He said, well, I ain't surprised. He said, your house is full of carbon monoxide. Right, okay. So it wasn't actually the central eating, it was the gas fire. Right. But we used to have the gas fire on the time. You know, in, in normal times, you wouldn't have any central heating. You just put gas fire on, warm the front room up, job done. Yeah. And when they delved into it, there was a plate over the flue at the back, which was mangled up and not not basically letting the gases go and they were coming straight into the front room. <clears throat> so after finding out that's what it was, I tried to, I tried to have another, you know, another go in a meeting and I just, I just wasn't all there yeah you know so that's what made me stop and i just i just said to my dad i said look you know i can't do this anymore so we just yeah. parked the car up parked the bus up didn't really put for sale on anything just left it and uh, i had a phone call one day off me carriage and said do you want to sell your bus do you want to sell your car sorry not your bus do you want to sell your car and i said biggest decision of me you know my career yeah. really because i, I don't yeah. want to didn't want to give something up that you love and it had to go and yeah. then it must have took two three four years maybe till my head come clear i used to go watch the racing yeah i'll be on these oh, okay you know? yeah and then once i'd had a couple of them jonathan i felt normal you know and that's yeah. strange yeah and then eventually over the years took about four or five years perfectly clear now Brilliant. so again yeah got all my wits about me and and, and still competitive person you know even on the main roads i can't stand anybody going by me without me <laughs> you know and i'm like here i am again and i'm like you know what like i said to you earlier on this is me time if yeah. you don't do it now i ain't never gonna do it you know? but i mean thank, thank you for sharing it and it's quite a scary scary story really do you know what i mean because that could have been even more serious than actually than what it was and you know thankfully might not, might not have been here jonathan you know and yeah very much for people out there as well just get your gas fires get your central eating yeah. check you know just get yeah. it done because you can't yeah. smell you can't see it and when you're in it obviously you don't know yeah no thank you no it's good absolutely absolutely you're right you're absolutely right um my last question before we move on to ed um and you've kind of touched upon it already a little bit so it's, it's over 15 years now since you've you've raced have you kept a close eye on the sport um in that time uh <laughs> I did for a few years after, but it got to the point where you get the bug back again. Yeah. And it's funny yeah. because stock car racing is all about that bug. Um, and I chose just to come away from it because yeah. it, it, it lures you in. And <laughs> probably 10 years, nine years, I haven't been to watch a race meeting. And then uh, Gary Tresler rung me and asked me if I wanted to have a go in this uh yeah. heritage car at coventry and i hung and on and said no i don't really want to do it gary you know and he's like come on please so i did it and i absolutely loved it so that's why i said got to you the last five yeah. years it's been ticking away yeah 
I've got my business where I want it to be. I've got a bit of time on my hands, you know. And then with this pandemic as well, what else are we doing at weekends? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it does. It does highlight, doesn't it? Or oh, actually, what what can I do? Brilliant. Well, it's great. It's great that you've made a decision to to come back into Formula One. Oh, we'll come back to you again in a minute, uh, Chris. So Ed, um, you, I guess you sort of first started racing Formula One as Chris was kind of finishing, debuting in two thousand and four. You mentioned that V eight uh, happened before the Formula One. Was did you enjoy the V eight? And did you kind of how do you know? Right, I'm ready to go into Formula One now. Yeah, it definitely didn't do me any harm. The V eight. Um, just the obvious step as James raced the Formula Ones to get a car and travel together sort of thing because we wasn't always at the same tracks um, and it made sense just to run one transporter and so we had a bus and trailer at the time put the car in the trailer and go together and and go from there really just have one car and and have a bit of a like a rookie year at it if you like. Yeah I spoke to Chris Cowley he was the first one we did in this sort of lockdown series he obviously came out of VX into Formula One and asked him you know, does it keep an eye on the V8s and does he have a view on the formula now? You know, I guess the same question to you, really. Do you sort of keep an eye on what V8s are doing and, and I guess thoughts on V8s at the moment? Not really, no. When I'm at the tracks, like, I don't really watch the other formulas, really. It's um, sad, really, but you're busy with yeah. your own car, aren't you? And, yeah. and you get talking and stuff and you, and you kind of miss out a bit, really. Yeah. Absolutely, you do. I, I, it's very important. Yeah. I, absolutely. Um, so you debuted in, in 2004, and it was almost a dream start to your Formula One career. You came within three laps of winning the world final at Coventry. You know, I, I remember it very, very well. Um, Peter, Peter Horton, I think, came past you. Um, so, uh, what's your memory of that? It must have been incredible. <laughs> yeah, that you know, very, very nearly the uh, the dream start. Like um, I went, like I had a like a very good year. Really, just took my time, got a good semi-final spot then I had a good semi-final finishing third so I had a good start um I kind of had no hopes for the race really because like Gary Castell was starting right behind me so he was he was always a bit of a big hitter really and yeah. then you had the foreigner in front he probably won't go so yeah um, then you had like Raymond Stewart Andrew and can't was it Gilbank the fourth so they'll be gone but it kind of really just unfolded I think I think Castell went to go for it and spun himself round, so left a big gap behind me. Um, Andrew's car never got going, which is unheard of. He never even started. Mm -hmm. uh, young Stuart um, took himself and Frank out, so it all just fell into place. We another got pulled away. And, yeah. um, and then it, um, I saw the laps come out, like five, four, three, and um, just split second switched off and a, a tyre had come off a car and rolled down the track and I, and I drove over it so I just lost traction yeah. put me in the in the muck for a bit and yeah just for folding to get uh, get under me um <laughs> yeah. but apparently folding uh, a record is really pleased of it. he was the youngest ever world final winner yeah. something like 20 years old and I would have been 19 yeah yeah after that's yeah. the first thing you ever said to me oh thank god you didn't win that um that's my um that was my my record. That is, I want to take to my yeah. grave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but I finished second and uh, brilliant, brilliant. Was, um, was, was there a point? Was there a point in the race when you thought I, I can win this? Because obviously, when you're in the lead at the beginning, you're like, oh, maybe I can't. It's a world fight. No, no disrespect to you, but more of a point like bloody hell, I'm actually winning it rather yeah. than I could win this. <laughs> and then. Um, and then it's like when you're driving at Coventry and it's really, really dry and stick, you have to be so, so gentle with the car and, and yeah. really like drive at your fingertips almost. Like you can't press the brakes too hard or throw it too hard and really, really drive it on the dust. It's hard yeah. to explain really, but you need to uh, take all your concentration to keep it, yeah. keep it on the fast bit. But an incredible achievement in, in what was your first oh, yeah. season. I look well, I probably... Um, the more I look back now, the more I'll kick myself at the time. I was probably a bit disappointed, but I'll never yeah. have um, a race unfold like that ever again. No. I think no. That, 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 that was my year, anyway. <laughs> so, you got, yeah, you've got plenty of time, yeah. Plenty of time. Well, okay. um, so those, those first few years in Formula One, you, you did race a significant number of meeting, meetings. You uh, maintained red. You were superstar. Did you have a real push to get to the top of the sport? Yeah, well, I think, obviously, getting that... Um, second in the world final your first year it's kind of a bad thing to happen because you're like oh we're up now we've, we've, we've got this sorted so 
course you're ordered that winter we ordered the tarmac car a new engine and, and yeah. went for it and um and really pushed on and then just better better kit better time more time in the garage and and really pushed on sort of thing does it give you that spur yeah definitely yeah is it like chris said like a drug that you need to keep feeding it because like we need to do this we need to do this we yeah, need to get that, better that's it yeah and it, and it all kind of gathers momentum and the more you the more you put in then the more better results you get in then the more you hooked in and then and, yeah but i suppose while you're going for it and you're getting the results you're enjoying it it's when you yeah. come to a bit of a dry spell and bad luck spell and that's when it gets hard and you've got it's yeah. hard to keep going sort of thing but we always did and took with the rough with the smooth and yeah. kept smiling and stuck yeah. with it yeah <laughs> But it's that phrase, isn't it, when you have bad luck, it's like, oh, it's stock car racing. It's a really common use phrase, and I think it is absolutely stock car oh, racing. Oh, it's definitely a sport that can turn around any minute and kick you in the... <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got a, got a habit of that, definitely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, so it's quite common these days for stock car drivers to use trucks to transport the cars. Uh, as a, but, you know, back in uh, when you kind of started, uh, it was coaches, but you were one of the yeah, first yeah, the to... Start with, yeah, and then and then went down the truck route. It was my dad, really, that um, had the horns for a truck. Uh, like he went to uh, an auction, bought like a nice V8 Scania tractor unit, and then had it professionally stretched, and then a coach builder put the body on it, had it all upholstered out, and all the ramps and stuff put in it. And I think that our lorry at the time kind of set the standard to what yeah. you see today, because there's some real smart, smart examples out there, isn't there, at the tracks now? Yeah. Some real lovely jobs, like it's... Um, one of the first ones that kind of set the benchmark, definitely. Yeah. So when I was like writing your questions, and I was like, it, it, you sort of thought about you, and it, it popped into my head. So it has kind of stuck with me. So all these yeah. years that you were one of the first to have that that truck piece going on. Um, well, is it, have you still got it? Uh, no, I've sold it. Okay. <laughs> so, well, I'll come to, come to it in a bit. So as we keep saying, we'll come to it as okay. as, as my story unfolds. Come, I'll come to you in a bit. No problem. Um, so you are, and um, you are one of a small number of drivers that have raced uh, cars built by Ray Witt. So why was he your preferred car builder? It was probably um, probably not always something different, but probably from that car builder Floyd. James had one and all, and went well. and enjoyed it. Um, I've got to have a few notes. Um, like we started. Like say so we had, had had the James went well and then in his one and then I I ordered one off him and it, and it went well and the good thing with Ray like it's I think he builds a strong car they're quite easy to work on they're fast they're quite good looking they're on bottom weight and also mm -hmm. with Ray you get the backup with it as well like he's such a lovely bloke you'd you'd ring him I've got a problem I've done this what do you think of this could you make me one of these um, so yeah like both Ray and Helen I've got a lot to thank them for and. Mm -hmm. They, I'll never remember. I'll never forget the story of before the world final in 2004. He was working on that car till probably one o'clock in the morning before, because really? I went to Birmingham the week before and wrecked it and bent bent all the roll cage on it. Okay. And then we was up there working on the car like till very late at night on the Friday night. And um, and he says, no, no, the car's gonna be right for tomorrow. You don't you worry about that. And, yeah, um, brilliant. And sure enough, on the day it was. No. Yeah. It was. I rarely let him down really. But... <laughs> He, he, he doesn't seem to, I mean, forgive me for, if I'm wrong, but he doesn't seem to build that many cars for other people. It just tends, seems to have been you, pretty much. Um, you'd, you'd have to ask him, really. If you, probably, that you might do if you asked him, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, he's, um, he's always seemed glad, glad to build our cars at the time, yeah? yeah. Good. Um, so we talked about, at the beginning, you created loads of meetings. Um, and so you... So sort of last raced in 2018, but the years preceding that, you seemingly cut back, cut back, cut back. So it's already yeah. a handful of those last few years. So, so why was that? And what was the reason for you stopping completely? The, my biggest problem towards the end was my engine. Um, like my engine went wrong. I mean, the, the engine builder was using, sent it away to be rebuilt. And it came back and the car didn't seem to have any power and it leaked oil. And so was, we didn't really put it down to the engine to start with because we, we trusted the guy. and. So he was changing gears and tyres and other things on the car, trying to get round it. But the whole time, it was it was like the engine. The last time I raced it, like he was getting pushed down the straight by the yellow tops and things. And so um, it got to the point where we said, oh, this, this ain't worth bothering with, really. And I paid twice to have it rebuilt. And 
and that yeah. kind of did me really and got it home to get off the lorry put it in the workshop and the car had never moved since okay. end of last year when i started talking to lloyd so yeah. I was, um, and then the same with my brother he he'd um for different reasons really he just kind of got fed up with stock cars as well and uh, mm. we had a chat and said do you envisage racing again we both said no so that's when we decided to put the lorry for sale okay. and, um, and it sold so that's where we are now <laughs> and now you're looking for some, somewhere to transport your stock car <laughs> uh, luckily my dad's cousin is a trailer dealer and we've rocked on a nice like a nice box trailer and oh, my wife and daughter are into show ponies and they okay. have a horse box so they said when um if i'm good and when they're not busy i'm allowed to use their horse box to brilliant take my car <laughs> so, not, so we are okay that's good good um thank you Ed. right so, so for both of you like i say you've been away from from racing for uh, a different uh, period of time but do you coming back in 2021 do you think the racing has changed much in that period of time you've been away mm, well no weren't we in a few weeks <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, do you, to be honest? I don't think so. I think with the changes that went on, i.e. coming off the hoosies and the other tyres and the, the shockers and the brakes, I was blaming a lot of that on my performance. The whole time I think it was engine and I was looking yeah. at other problems okay. and, not, and not looking at the obvious, really. So hopefully I've heard the engine run now when it redone and makes me yeah. smile and shake my trousers when, it's, when it runs. And... <laughs> And uh, so I've got pretty excited for it now. So hopefully I'll have no excuses. Uh, no. Things limb and and it'll have be plenty of power for me. So get me back to yeah. where I want to be, where I, where I know I can be. So when you finished in 2018, I can't remember. Were you, were you on American races then? Were we using those? Yes. As the, yes. Yeah. Um, weird tyres, really. I, it, I don't think it's just me, but I always find to look at one, it can look sound, like plenty of tread on it, but it's got no no goodness in it if you like it's okay. it's weird like i don't know but hopefully i'm gonna buy new tires now start again yeah and, and hopefully have a clean sheet kind of thing yeah change shockers as well change so i'll have new new engine new axles new shockers and uh, like yeah I know, my, I know my car i've had like a, a straight edge on my car and my car's straight yeah. um so there's not too it's like a clean sheet start, start isn't it yeah a good start yeah a good start back yeah so brilliant so and so i guess fingers crossed for the for the first meeting you won't see that much different yeah, you know? yeah that's it take me time and hopefully uh get a few yeah, qualifying points yeah that's where i want to be yes England. good so in your careers uh both of you have you had any rivals with rivalries with particular drivers that kind of stood out during that period of time not really, yeah, well, not really. You've had the odd one that pisses you off, obviously, you know, because that's the nature of the beast, isn't it? You yeah. know, but not really, no. You always fear. I don't care what anybody says about, about any form of racing. And somebody will come on and say, oh, I ain't scared of nobody. I ain't scared of this. I ain't scared of that. You've got to have that fear factor to be any good. Okay. You know, I don't care what anybody says. Everyone fears each other. You know, in, in different ways, because there's, 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 there's higher ones that you fear more, you know, yeah. because the further back they are uh, and the reputation that they've got. But when you're in the car yourself, it's each to their own. It's whatever yeah. you want to do in the car. If you take somebody out, you've got to prepare for the consequences because you're going to get it back. Yeah. Regardless, and that's one thing about stock cars, it's, it's quite a level playing field. You can level yourselves. You know, as you know, you know, we've all seen it, You've yeah. all done it. you know, and, and I just think you've got to have the fear for the edge, for that extra okay. edge, you know, and, and without that, I don't think you win, to be honest. Yeah. Really. OK. Um, when we've done these these interviews, there's been sort of a running theme, I guess, with drivers, which is suggest that it's a bit of a, a stock car track is a bit of a school playground that you, you have got to stand up for yourself. Otherwise, you, you will get bullied in inverted commas. Do you know what I mean? You, and you've got to earn the respect to the other drivers whilst you're out there, reason. Otherwise, it's just a bit of a nightmare for you. Well, I was never a, a, a big hitter anyway, to be honest, as you may have seen. Um, I was a 
if you're hitting people, you, you're going backwards. If you yeah. can bump and run, bump and run, bump and run, that's the way to do it for me. Start destroying each other and nobody's going anywhere, to be honest, apart from in the garage for a week or in hospital <laughs> for a week, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I agree, yeah. Just try, yeah. And, try and be fair. Every car's got a front and a back bumper, isn't it? And yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the same, yeah. Agreed. You're right, though, Jonathan. It's a proper leveler. Stock car racing is a pro. Doesn't matter how big you are, or how small you are. When you're in the car, you're all the same. Like yeah. in the school bully, isn't it? There's always somebody better at bullying. There's always. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Um, I may have already. Uh, you may have already answered this, uh, Ed, but I'm gonna ask the question anyway. So, standout moment of your careers to date, each of you. Wow. Yeah, I've won some. Won some nice races. The. Um... The the final and world final night. Uh, the yeah. is it the Masters the European day? I've done that Masters. I've done that two years on the track. Is it, no, is it was it the it's the, the final world. of the day after? Yeah, day after the world yeah. the world Masters at Northampton. Um, yeah, won the Ben Fun race at yeah. Coventry. That takes some doing, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and a, a lot of the early races like have been. Miles in the lead in finals and things, and, and, and diffs have gone and funny things like that. And yeah. so, uh, and been took out, like been miles in the lead, been took out my back marks and things. So, mm. my, 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 probably my stats don't reflect to um, what could have been. Yeah, if you had stats for nearly races, yeah, um, <laughs> it's a bad look. Yeah, I'll, do, um, I'll be up there. But Star, Star Cars is all about look, a lot of it is about oh, looking, yeah, looking for it. It's not one until it's one, is it? No. Mine, mine, Jonathan, was probably it, before the World Masters, I think it was the Internations Cup. Would that, would that be right? It rings a bell. Yeah, it does ring a bell. Yeah. I'm That's sure cool. yeah. in 96, or no, 90, 98, I won that Internations Cup. Then it turned to the World Masters in 99, which I won it again in 99, I think, or 2000. And the other place I used to like was was Buxton. That engine used to love Buxton. And and the there, weren't, there weren't much that beat me around Bust, uh, Buxton apart from Frankie Wayman, to be honest. But I think I won the Buxton Track Championship two years on the track, okay. um, which was good, you know. And I don't know, that, that was about me. Uh, yeah. World Finals, I did two. Did, I finished 13th in my first one. I started on the bloody second row as well. <laughs> um, and then some Dutchmen took me out with about four to go, if I remember. And then the other world final was at Bradford in 1996. And okay. I got me, I went up there, I was lying about six or seventh, and I went up the inside of somebody, and it took me front outside valve off. And that will me yeah. finish. But it, I love Bradford. It, Bradford's a nice track. What I can it, remember, if said the same, it's wicked. Yeah, well, me and Jordan were very fortunate. I don't know if you saw the video um, a couple of weeks ago to go up to Bradford and, and have a look and do a bit of stuff for Steve up there. And it it's an incredible stadium. It genuinely is really good. Uh, really, you know, we, wa yeah. we watched that uh, with yourself and Ian Higgins yeah. and, and yeah, Steve. Yeah. Um, and actually, when he's in them corporate box things, that should bring another level to stock car racing, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It really should. That that's that is the pinnacle of the. If they can carry on with Bradford like that, yeah, then the sky's the limit. You'll end up with other stuff coming. You know, probably not in my time, um, but you you'll end up with more tracks getting more of this. Looking look at the NASCAR Bristol yeah. Motor Speedway. They've just chailed it. Yeah, yeah. They had NASCARs going round on it, and it was like just looked like a stock car race on a Saturday night. To be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I mean some talk talking to Ian, I mean, that, that is the idea, I think, behind Bradford. It's going to bring in a different level of person to stock car racing and enable you to introduce people and go, well, I've got some sponsors, well, where can I take, take them to Bradford and put them in that, in that stand? And it's just a, it's a different level, isn't it, for, for the sport the and viewing, hopefully kick it on. The actual viewing that you yeah. actually look down <laughs> is like superb. You can't get a better position than that, to be honest. It is it's literally straight down. So you look on the balcony, you look down, and and the tr the track's there. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, there's no other view like it in Stock Car. So looks superb. Can't wait, mate. To be honest, you know, I'm good. Like a kid again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. We're going to talk to you for a second, Chris. Um. So the plan is to race in 2021, and you talked about the decision uh, that you took to get there. It's sort of four or five years of woman and R in. 
you know, actually making, yeah, I'm going to do it. How, how big a decision was that? Because it's kind of a bit life changing in some respects because your whole life's going to shift. Well, you know, as you get older, you get a bit more wiser. So I just think now it, it doesn't bother me. I, I want to do it, but I'm not the fear factor that I was when I was in my twenties. Yeah. I'm okay. sort of more relaxed, more, you know, it's, it's going to be good. I've got a funny feeling about it. I'm not going to sure. have anything to do with the car, to be honest. It's going to be with Matt all the time. Right. Okay. I don't want to, I haven't got the manpower. I haven't really got the time. Um, but I just want to be a posh driver where I turn up with my bag and my helmet race the car if it gets smashed up matt please sort it out for us see you next week That's yeah fine. good right so let's talk about that then so matt newsom is a very very busy boy uh we discovered that last week when we <laughs> spoke to matt um so so your car's at max now then I'm, I'm assuming so what's the history of the car and i guess you know what's matt doing for you now well the car the car when i came over to, to ed's uh the car was just sat in the corner of a one of his buildings, prime it up, been shot blasted. Yeah, all, prime. all steel, hadn't it? No axles, just basically a basic shell. So it obviously went from there to Ed and myself. Well, Ed took me down. We put it on his trailer, put two axles on his trailer, the aerofoil, the bonnet, took it down to Matt's and said, well, we spoke to Matt, you know, basically, can, can you do this sort of thing? So I was looking for somebody to put it together. You actually tried still at first, didn't you? Because yeah, he's got other projects, and, he, and he's yeah. got other projects. You know, Stuart Smith, he's got other projects. Yeah. I'm too busy, and then he said, "Oh, you know what?" He said, "I bet Matt will do it." So he basically rung him. Yeah, no problem. So that was it. We had a little road trip down to near Cromer, dropped <laughs> it off, and uh, lifted it off, and just left it with him. And all yeah. it, all I've been just liaisoning. We've been down a couple of times, haven't yeah. we? And I took the engine down that Big Ron's done for me, <laughs> which was Ed's engine by the way yeah. as well it's a big block 548 cubic inch big block that is so you have these big engines i love big engines I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've never i've never really drove a small block okay so a big block with plenty of grunt that's me all over it's a bit yeah. like myself really i suppose <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So you set yourself out to, to start racing again in 2021. Uh, you mentioned it's just going to be shale. Have you set yourself any kind of targets or anything you kind of aspire to do, or is it just get the grip of shale to begin with? I want I want to go and enjoy myself, you know. And, and like you guys, like everybody, everybody who watches this, everyone wants to enjoy themselves after this pandemic we've had, you know. And I just feel that we're going to have a good laugh. You know, I want to have a laugh again. Yeah. That, that's one of the things I want to see all the all the people when I was around probably ain't there anymore. I don't mean I don't mean dead, but I don't mean the <laughs> don't, you know what I mean. Um, yeah. But I just want to I want to I want to just to get going. Let's do something, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that, and that's basically what I'm doing. So yeah. Do you, do you, do you think it might escalate in the sense if you go right? I'm enjoying shale. Or... Oh, I think I might do tarmac now. Do you, can you see <laughs> that, or is it just no? I am just going to be very rigid and stick to one surface have a bit of fun tarmac racing is is brilliant i sort of mastered the tarmac racing i didn't master the shale yeah and like i said to you i repeat myself when we go back five years and had a go in that that jane bean car and it was actually a handled like a dream i couldn't believe it and i thought you know what this is this is how it should be yeah. So that's what I want to do. I know this car of Ed's will, will handle. There's no two ways about it. And it'll have enough power, and it'll be just down to me and the car to gel, really. And yeah. if if for any reason, you know, I don't know, we'll have to see if we get loads of points and, and we get qualifying rounds, end up in a semi-final on tarmac, uh, what am I going to do? Yeah. If Ed's on shale, then all we'll do is swap cars. Yeah. He can have that mine and I'll have his, you know, for, for that meeting. Um, okay. But going back, I don't, I don't know. We've got to test the water, haven't we? Really? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because yeah. looking at it, you've got quite a compact fixture list for this. Yeah. year that's for sure. Yeah. And, I, and I thought I'd choose the one with less races, but it's worse. It's worse. There is a lot of shale. There is a lot of shale. <laughs> and and before we before we reveal your car for for this year, I mean, I, I, are you apprehensive at all about coming back? Not so much now, but I tell you what, I think on the night I will be. 
Okay. You know, there's no two ways about it. When there's 50, 60, 70 cars in there, and they're all cracking up, and I'll be like, oh. <laughs> 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 so if it, it, it is what it is. I'm going out there. Where yeah. you've put me, you buggers, where you've put me, you've put me in blue now. I finished oh, off with really? Superstar, and they've started me in blue. So I ain't going to be able to have a feel of anything. I've just got to just start my belts, mate, and just go. Yeah, that, that is the worst grade to start with, isn't it? It is the worst grade. Yeah. Um, Chris, um, right. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about what 2021 is hopefully going to look like. Um, it's now time to reveal your car for this season. So, Chris, over to you. All right, guys. My car for 2021 um, is at Matt Newson's at the moment in time. Um, it will be debuted at uh, Kings Lynn. Um, all singing, all dancing. Let's see how we can go. The pictures are to follow. absolutely fantastic i think one thing that i did notice was, was that you've had to change your number unfortunately this year oh cool, yeah that's uh, that was quite a tough one to be honest i tried and tried and tried to get me my number back the 284 number from uh, sam wasp but uh, sophie blessed her tried her heart out and um he just won't give it up he said he's going to race this year so yeah. i had to pick another one to give me a list of about as long as your arm and i'm looking through looking through didn't find anything that i found that suited me um and then i just said what about 500 and she said oh that's a hot stop driver's got that number she says i'll, I'll ring him ask him he hasn't raced for a couple of years and see if he's gonna if he's gonna carry on racing and actually he said no he, he packed up that was the end of him and i said that'll do then 500 it is yeah because i had to get it i had to get it because um would <laughs> it sign right the car yeah <laughs> It's a good number. It is a good number. Um, Chris, you can't get the car on track on your own. So is there anybody you'd like to thank? Well, I thank myself because it's a lot of my money gone into it, to be, to be yeah. true. Um, <laughs> I thank my dad, really, for, 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 for backing me up. You know, as before, he was like, mm, I wouldn't bother, you know. But this time, he's like, you know what, son, do what you want. You yeah. want to have another go, you have a go. Um, Thank my Uncle Gerald, because my Uncle Gerald used to race. He was 287, as my dad was 284 all them years ago. Um, he's chucked me a few quid. Um, and really, Matty Newson and, and Ed, Ed's give me no end of stuff, to be yeah. truthful, with the car. You know, he didn't just give me the car. He got to give me stuff, other stuff as well. So I can only thank Edward, thank my dad. I thank Big Ronnie for doing the engine for me, bless, bless him. I thank Matty Newson really as well for putting it all together because there's one thing I can't do it. Um, yeah. I, I just thank everybody else. There's not really much more apart from myself. Thank myself yeah. for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you leave Ed's house, do you have to have your pockets checked to make sure you've not took something out stock car related with you as you've left? <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's quite bad like that. Yeah, stock car free house. Stock car free house. <laughs> no, no gearbox or mess. No gearbox or anything. It's very nice, to be, uh, very nice put together, to be honest. Brilliant. Chris, cheers. Thank you very much. And we'll come back to you in a minute. Well, good luck for uh, 21. Um, Ed, you've not been away as long as Chris. So what are your intentions uh, coming back? Are you looking to get back up amongst the Red Superstars or is it a more relaxed approach yeah, like you can... I, uh, I, I intend on going for it yeah doing as many meetings as i can but 
on the other hand, I always say that at the start of any year, and then probably a couple of three months into it, I realise, oh, this is hard work, and and can't fizzle off a bit. But I plan on going for it. Yeah, I've I've got my car. I'm going to use one car, and and um, and I've kind of got myself a pair of axles, so I can just change axles and my brakes, um, shockers. So it shouldn't be that bad so to run the one car. Uh, I've had it on the scales. There's both setups. I'm pleased with how it weighs um, for both services. So I just have to wait, really. I think the engine's the right thing for two, um, for different services, and, and go from there, really. So, so the plan is to run it as a dual surface car in 2021, then? Yes. Brilliant. OK, so I've got a question around that then. So we've talked about dual surface cars quite often um, on these off-track interviews and a lot of the top drivers have said, no, no, to be competitive, you need a car for shell and a car for tarmac um, to, you know, to, because of the time that's involved to change them over, etc. Um, is there anything you think there's a sport we could do to make uh, one car more competitive? Or do you think actually, no, I can do it. You know, you can do it competitively. I don't know. I think starting with a car more built for tarmac is the better yeah. option than having a shale car on tarmac. Uh, we've not got really any rough shale tracks now, like Bellevue, Stoke, they've kind of gone. So we are on smooth shale, which yeah. is an advantage. You'll get away with running the shorter body shockers. Um, not worry about the bumps so much. Um, just see how we go, really. It's, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work. I'm not I'm not stuck for something else to do, so just just see how it goes, really. But I don't see why it won't. Um, I've got a lot of faith in my brother as well, who is very good at setting cars up, and mm. and he's he's had a look at them both, and he seems happy. So we think okay. between us, we won't be too far away. Brilliant. It'd be interesting to see how it does work then, because you know there is that thing is <clears throat> as a sport we kind of say well actually if you've got one car to use on both surfaces from a cost perspective that's got to be better so if it does work then that might give others the you know inclination to give it a go themselves it's 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 one engine one gearbox um i've had to like the because i've been out of the job for a bit i've only had to go and buy one new msd box um one set of new shockers uh well two sets because of two axles but um can't just keep the cost down a bit but also um space for me really like before i'd kind of had had a good tidy up i had so much stuff everywhere and, and it kind of gets you down i'd, I'd, be, I'd be truck parked outside i had i had three chassis at one point four mm -hmm. engines and, and i've got it right down to one car one engine one set my little box trailer um and it's right nifty little little setup and it's no no stress to have around you it's not a lot of gear around you because you can't accumulate a lot of gear so i say a lot um a lot of spares i accumulate the sold on facebook i've a lot of ld axles which i think are old hat now um a lot of rally tires that i couldn't see myself using and, and just had a real good tidy up and yeah. it's almost a pleasure to be in the workshop now you're not going yeah. through old crap really you've, you've yeah been, you're doing the job right you probably buying new stuff where you could get away with second hand but it's you know a, a lot more tidier if you like it's it's better yeah no that makes sense i think yeah. thank you for that um so talking about tarmac racing so i do remember a couple of years ago two three years ago you raced on tarmac with a small wing um, not many people do so do wear a fours work it's hard to tell that that car didn't really get off to a brilliant start um in in my head, I knew what I wanted, and I, and I explained it all to Ray Witz, what I wanted him to build for me. And at the time, he was like, oh, well, if that's what you want. But I don't think he really thought it was the right thing, but it, I insisted. So he built yeah. it anyway. Um, I should have really just said, Ray, build me a tarmac car, because <laughs> he knows a lot better than I do, sort of thing. So it, I don't really ever get comfortable in the car. So it wasn't really a fair test. It was... yeah. Probably a lot more technical. I just used like a standard three link back axle and standard front end, but that was very, very technical really for what I'd normally use. And once we got it set up, it was it was good, but just took that much more work all the while to do it. And yeah. I didn't really feel safe in the car. That the way my feet were in the car, it felt like 
if you had a good crash and hurt my ankles and stuff. Yeah. So it wasn't probably like a true witsy car. I don't think it's. I think if I had another car, I'd let him build one of his style and yeah, let him do the so thing. When you raced tarmac in 2021, what kind of air are you gonna have on your on your car? Two standard ones, yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a nice a nice one built. I don't know who built it, but it came from. Um, Okay. Oh, I don't know. God knows. <laughs> Steve, oh, Steve, Steve, Steve Reedman. Steve Reedman yeah. got it, and it's like quite a low nifty thing. So it's got no damage on it, and um, and um, and I know I'm, I'm pleased with that. Yeah, and I've I've set yeah. it so it fits in my trailer perfect, and then um, a shale wing. Bit of a story behind my shale wing. Um, I had a bit of an old tatty one. So I thought, I know, to, uh, to save myself a few quid, <laughs> I'll, um, I'll buy a sheet of alley and I'll, I'll have it reskinned and, um, and painted. And I worked it out and I ended up, by the time I did it, putting 320 quid into this for doing it. <laughs> and um, then I was talking to Matt on the phone. I said, oh, how much is a new wing out of off chance? So that was 300 quid painted brand new. <laughs> so I'm trying to be, uh, trying to be frugal. <laughs> you can tell it's second hand because there's, Steel's a bit pitted, and you move it, you can need all the old pop bits inside it where they've all been drilled. <laughs> and it's, it's just a bit heavier than a normal one. And yeah. so, trying to be a bit frugal, I've ended up with uh, something. <laughs> you have to kind of um, kind of price things up, really. You know, like, I don't yeah. like to see stuff tricked in the scrap, but sometimes no. you have to. Uh, uh, but at least you've got a story behind it, though. So, it's kind yeah, of. Well, it's it's fun good money to bad is the same, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so you mentioned your brother James, um, right. and he, he's raced also quite recently, but again not for not for a couple of seasons. Yeah, Does he have kind of got, I very much doubt it, but but you never know with him. He's got he's a bit very indecisive. Okay. But, I just uh, he had this do a Smith yeah. shell car, didn't he? A tarmac car. He has got a very nice tarmac car. Yeah, yeah. it's a shame that I'm not four inches shorter because uh, I've had my eye on it. Oh, can you not fit in it? No, I'm a bit long in the leg. Okay. I'm a bit too, a bit too tall for it. But we, but we may see it on track, maybe. We, but we just don't know. I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> right. So I'm um, obviously going racing in 2021. What are you most looking forward to um, about the coming season? I think probably the same answer as everyone. Bradford, really. It's um, yeah. big, big, fast shower track, bank shower track, big, big crowds, and uh, real, real hype about it, really, and. Also, seeing if I can compete, uh, I mean, I look at the names of the people now, and it's I remember as little kids playing in a pile of mud in Coventry pits, like the yeah, people, yeah. um, showing my age a bit now, and seeing the lads that are um, are competing, I remember them as snotty nose little, yeah, yeah, with their dads, pushed them but, Sam. but um, <laughs> but now, yeah, they're all uh, all good lads going well. I, I do think it's really, really scary because yeah, I don't think I'm particularly old. I am. However, there's people racing in Formula One that I remember seeing David in their minutes. Do you know what I mean? And they're now yeah. in, in Formula One and been in Formula One for a long time. It's like, right, I am old. And that's how I measure kind of my age, just through stock cars. Yeah, I can't well. 2004, I started. You do the maths. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, Ed, um, so we've spoken about 2021 and your plan to race on both surfaces with one car. So, Ed, over to you to reveal your car for the new season. Yeah, the car, it's, um, it's, it's got a fair age about it. It's, my brother had it built as a tarmac car in probably 2006. Um, he won the European in it. Um, and I used it on Shell before and did quite well in it. Um, like I say, dead straight, good big small block, um, new axles, new gearbox, everything like that. And um, just see how we go with it, really. Um, I, I don't see why we won't, won't be on the pace with it.
Um, so I think just just for people that are watching, so you've obviously seen there, uh, Ed's car. So at the end of the interview, we're going to post some videos of the engine in, in uh, the car and also some of the rebuild pics that Ed sent us. So kind of hang on at the end. Yeah, and, and so I've sent them, them bits and bombs. Uh, yeah. You're all right with them. There's nothing else I've really got. You're okay with what I've That's sent perfect. That's perfect. People will like that. People will like that. So we've now seen both of your cars. Uh, just a few more questions. Um, do either of you have any pre-race rituals or superstitions? Not really. Um, so obviously it's changed a bit now. We've got these um, ear receivers. Mm. Yeah, they yeah, might be a yeah. bit fiddly, mightn't they? Um, I've heard people say they're good. I've heard people say they're bad. So I'll have to make my way, my own mind up when I... When they well, you get to listen to my dad every Saturday night when you're racing, so... <laughs> <laughs> no comments. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's. I've been on on both sides of his judgments. Once uh, he says I jump the start and I restart the final. Um, that's when I disagreed and ran the trophy over. Yeah, um, yeah. And, another, yeah, and another time, somebody re jumped the restart and I fell victim of it and I moaned and he agreed and gave me the final win. So oh, I've, um, oh, I've had it, he's, he's been, I can't grumble really. Yeah. He's been fair. I've had, I've, yeah. I've had but I think on the good. Boys, it was a good job. I don't think I've ever had a, a telling off from him ever, to be honest. No, that's good. That's not a bad I'm thing, Chris. I'm a good boy, I'm a good boy. Yeah, good boy. absolutely. <laughs> talk, talk to Matt about jumping starts. Obviously, my dad seems to think Matt jumps a start. Oh, mate, I, 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 watched his, I watched his interview. That was quite, uh, it was going like, he was having a right go at your dad, weren't he? I know, we don't watch it. He's in a, um, a, a bad spot, isn't he? He's never going to, one decision is going to please one man and upset another. It's, yeah. He's never going to be everybody's cup of tea all the while as he eats. No, it's, of course not. He can't take no, it. It's a tough job, isn't it? And I think you just, yeah. I guess, you just need to make the best. It does a good job on the whole. Yeah, good. Thank you, Matt. Um, right, so what's been your funniest or most bizarre moment in stock car racing? Mine, mine. Yeah. I remember, your life, I remember doing a, a European weekend at Northampton and I, um, I won Eaton Final on the Saturday night. So being buzzed up as you do, we're all stopping on the bus. Me pinion went on the uh, diff. I used to run a LD actually in that Lundy car for, for a bit, then we changed. But the funniest part was I won eating final, went round the bar, <laughs> hey, you know, as you do. Mark Gilbank uh, comes across on this uh, little motorbike scooter. So it was about, I don't know what time it was, it must have early hours of the morning. I said, Stop, give it here. So I jumped on this frigging thing, Jonathan, I swear. I went round the track and everyone was cheering me going down the back straight. Oh, <laughs> the bloody tyre went down on the front. Next thing, the old bit of the wobble. <laughs> About four somersaults, mate, landed on the bend. And I thought, all I had, all I could hear was the biggest cheer. And I got up and I got all, all my skin had gone on my elbow and everything. And I just stood up and I was like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right. <laughs> Got, went to bed that night. By this time, my dad and, and Big Ron had to go home and get me another pinion. So they, they stopped at home Saturday night. Left yeah. me and uh, my cousin on the bus, absolutely k -line. They didn't know I'd been on the on the beer. And uh, come the next morning, uh, my cousin was being sick out the bus door as he's trying to pass the pinion over the fence. <laughs> I come out like someone had dragged me through an edge. And uh, basically, I did absolutely shit on the Sunday. I think I got a second yeah. bit and my dad will never let me down for that. And that's why he used to stop me from drinking. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping <laughs> you safe. That's my funniest thing. What about you, Eddie? I'd say probably away, away from stock cars. Um, yeah. The people you meet that follow stock cars, you wouldn't yeah. believe how big stock cars is. Um, the best example is the quarry I go to. I went there for the first time and when you go somewhere new, they're thinking, oh, I don't like the look of him sort of thing. But I went to the window and the girl was the, the gaffer's daughter and she was wearing a Rob Speed hoodie. Brilliant. So I was like, oh, look, stock cars. And then, then you hit it off. Yeah. And, uh, and it did me really well. Like, we get a good rate from them. And uh, they even give me, give me work for my lorries and stuff. And struck Brilliant. a really good relationship. And the same thing at Scania Trucks. The guy there, he's uh, a stock car lad. And 
Ah, okay. Do the extra little jobs on the truck every 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 six weeks when it goes in, and um, and uh, uh, you got my JCB man that comes. He um he's from Leicester and he used to help. Is it Phil Wheaton? No, oh, um, yeah. Um, Phil Wheaton, yeah. And he, and he tells me the same story every time he comes about him and Phil Wheaton <laughs> in the Coventry and. <laughs> And, it, and, it, and it's good though. Um, so it just shows that stock cars is in a good good place and it still has the yeah. following that yeah. it deserves, really. And it's a fun quite, quite good to everyone. see, yeah. And, um, I think it is. And you, and you do forget, don't you, that how many people have maybe been to stock cars or, you know, have heard of stock cars or, oh, yeah, you know, it's huge. And, and But I guess you, you do in your line of work or come across yeah. people that are involved, which is brilliant. And they just want to talk to you. Once we went to Cornwall for a weekend with um, Stuart and Katie Smith, um, yeah. we drove around the car park, finally got parked, got out the uh, the van thing, and um, we got, oh look, Stuart Smith, and then <laughs> talking to him, and then that stuck cars, and then about half an hour later, another guy, a different guy, oh look, Stuart Smith, and you don't realise how, no. how um, popular it yeah, is. Yeah, but how popular, and what a good following it is, and like, like a celebrity, honestly. Did, did they know who you were, though? Were you a bit like, well, you know Stuart, why do you know who I am? I was just his mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're right, and I think there's an element of, when I um, asked Joff Gibson to do the interview, it was like, well, nobody's interested in me, I'm just a bloke from Bury Races, stock cars, but actually, it's, no, no, you're not that, no. you are out there, and you put yourself in front of a huge amount of people on a weekly basis, and I think that people do hold you in high regard. Definitely. Good. You see, you see now as well. Me butting in here, Jonathan. No. See, when I did it, you've got you didn't have YouTube really. There yeah. was none of this. But now you can literally just get your iPad. Yeah, go, stocks line. Oh, stocks line. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to Keith <laughs> Barber. Oh, did a win? Did a win? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's true. But now you can just get your iPad or your computer and go. Ed Mitchell, yeah. Stuart Smith, Bing, all fires yeah. up there. Or you can sit and watch. All nights worth of racing, you yeah. know, just thanks. like that. Thanks to these lads. Yeah, thanks to you boys. You know, you, <laughs> you know, years ago you had to buy the old VHS off Jack Barber. You know, and uh, I've still got some of them. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, though, now Chris, people will know who you are as well when you turn up at Kings Lane as well. That's a good thing. Brilliant. With your good. with your bag in your helmet. That's it. You know, I'll have my name put on it for everybody if that if that makes it better for them. <laughs> <laughs> I just know some of the drivers that don't remember who 500 was. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, I guess my last question for you both, and you need to kind of confer and come up with a, a final answer for this one. Um, so your top three drivers of all time in Formula 1 stock car racing. We've not chat, we, we were we chatting about it, but we, 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 we got... Um, well, you, you've got to be, you've got to be Daddy Stuart Smith, haven't you, at the end of the day, he's... Yeah. In my eyes, iconic man, you know, and always will be. Um, you've got to, there's, there's not just three, is there really? There's, there's no. probably, probably a handful of ten. To there be, is. You know, you've got you've got your speakers of the world. Um, you've got Frankie. You know, you, there's there's quite a few of them. Andrew Smith, Stuart Smith Jr., Edward, myself. You know, yeah, all these people. But there's, there's quite a lot, you know, and there's, there's a hell of a lot of good lads out there. Tom Harris, you know, he, he's one of loads of stuff, you know, and in America as well, he's doing stuff in the States, you know. As like a middle grader, the top lads, I think they're really fair. They're not going to stick you up the wall for no reason. I think they're all respectable yeah. gentlemen almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think, yeah. there's no, no dickheads. I, don't we're, think. We're, I think me personally, I'm out to, obviously I'm out, everyone's out to win. I'm out to have a good time. If we win, then wicked, you know? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I might to enjoy myself and have the crap with people like we used to do, you know? Yeah. See, and see the big happy for the stock car family. Yeah. I think, I think in terms of answering the question of top three drivers of all time, it is, it is really difficult because you kind of go based on what? Do you know what I mean? You go final wins, world final wins, yeah. you know, really success abroad. So and it is really, really hard. And you're right, you've, you've got such a huge pool of people to, to uh, choose from and if you went like with people racing in 2021 again you've got probably 20 drivers you could go well they're really good so and, and i guess it shows how healthy the sport is now isn't it in in this coming season that's true but you've also got you've got drivers in stock cars that do it for a living yeah you know to a certain extent and then you're up against people who 
work five, six days a week and then go racing. So you've got to be careful where it becomes um, unfair to say that they're brilliant, but that's all they do. Yeah, you know, that's a fair point. You know what I mean? There could be yeah. two categories, you know, as, as ones who do it all the time for that reason, you know, and there's other people who have to go to work as well as just as good. Yeah. You no, know, that's actually a fair point. Yeah, that is that's a fair point. Um, Chris, Ed, it's been absolutely uh, brilliant talking to the pair of you this evening. Thanks so much for, for your time. Um, my, my first time doing a, a joint interview, and I think it, I think it went okay. Hey, it's so, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant, Jonathan. To be fair. Right. Listen. Yeah, good luck to you. But in a few months, when uh, when we've had the, had a few months in it, you know that would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, so what, what the plan is, right, we do, uh, we'll do like, because uh, we don't have public access to the pit. So last year when we went, we did some like pit interviews with people that won races and or, or were involved in big incidents or whatever. So, you know, fingers crossed, you, you won't be a big incident, you'll win a race and you'll come and talk to me at a stock car track, maybe the first Kingsland of the season. Who who knows? You never know. You never know. Yeah. Oh, I don't see one. Not. We're both running from blue, so yeah. you never know. So. Just don't take each other out. That's no, that's God, the key. You know, that's the inevitable <laughs> thing. I've said. To you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, coming out that first corner, hey, just be careful. <laughs> Tangled up, and that's the silly. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no, because... so listen. Good, good luck for 2021. Thanks so much for your time, and um, you know, I see you both at the first Kings Lane in what is only, I think, less than five weeks' time. So yeah, thank you very much. Long. Not long. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jordan. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. See you, boys.